Hey there, Sam. A golden rule in web development to keep in mind is that we should never, ever trust the user input because terrible things can happen to your website. Malicious user can perform attacks like SQL injection or cross-site scripting with ease. With that being said, validating user input is one of the most important thing in building a web app. And Laravel makes it very easy for us to perform validation on the incoming user input. So here in our post controller, currently in the store method, we are expecting the request to contain these three fields, title, body, and user IDs. Now title and body must be a string and user IDs must be an array. But at the moment, we don't have any mechanism to validate this data type. Let's learn how to do this in Laravel. There's actually a few ways to validate requests in Laravel. The first way, which is the easiest way, is to create a request class. We'll go to our terminal and type in PHP Addison make request, followed by the request name. We're creating a request for the store method, so our code post store request. And now back to our code, if we navigate to our app folder, HTTP and request, you'll notice that our newly created request class is living in here. Let's open it, and it's a simple class with two methods, authorized and rules. The authorized method is a way for us to define the logic to determine whether the current request has a correct authorization to perform this request. This method will return a boolean. If it returns false, that means the current user is not authorized to perform this action, and the request will fail. And if this function returns true, that means the current user has the authorization to perform the current operation. This is very useful when our app contains API endpoints that's only available to a certain user group. For example, we might have a few endpoints that we only want the admin to use. So if a normal user attempt to call this endpoint, we should put down the logic so that the authorized function here will return false and will only return true if the current logged in user is an admin. The rules method is where we define all the validation logic. The method returns an array, which is basically a mapping of fields against validation rules. And Laravel has provided us a lot of built-in validation rules. So if we go to the documentation, we can see a whole lot of rules here, each with different purpose. The link is in the description if you want to check them out. But for now, we've got three fields in the store request, title, body, and user IDs. Title and body should be a string, so I'll map them to the string rule. User IDs is an array, so I'll map it to be an array. We also want these three fields to be mandatory, so we should also assign the required rules to each of them. To apply multiple rules to a field, there are two ways to do it. One is to use the pipe operator followed by the second rule. So our title field here is now required and also must be a string. The other way to apply multiple rules is to use an array, where each element in the array is a rule. And now the rules for body and title are exactly the same, just using a different syntax. And just a question for you, which syntax should we use? And again, it's entirely up to you. It's a personal preference. I prefer to use the array syntax because it makes more sense to me. So I'll use the array syntax for the user's ID field as well. And that's pretty much the basic of request class. Now to apply this request class to our store method in a controller, we simply need to inject it in a store method argument. And that's it. Now our incoming request to the store method is validated by the post store request class. Let's test our code. We'll go to Postman and send a post request to our store endpoint with a simple JSON body. And we got a 403 error saying that our action is unauthorized. And the reason is because back in our request class, in the authorized method, we returned false, which gave us the earlier error. Let's change it to true. Go back to Postman and try again. And we're not receiving a JSON response. The reason is because we need to send an additional header in our request, which is accept and the value is application JSON. If we don't do this, Laravel will not be aware that we want a JSON response and therefore send us back the default homepage. Let's try again and we get our JSON response. Now, although we get a JSON response, we got an error with status code 422, which means the request did not pass the validation. And if we look at the response, it says that the body field is required and also the user ID fields is required because we did not include those two fields in our request body. And that means our request class is working fine. Now the title field must be a string. Let's see if this validation is working. We'll go to the request body and change the title field into a number. Click on send and we get an error saying that the title must be a string. How cool is that? Now we can also customize the error message by defining a method called messages 
in our request class. We need to return an array in this method, which uses the dot notation to specify the field and rule pair. For example, let's say I want to customize the error message for the body required rule. In the array key, I simply need to specify body dot required, and the value will be the customized error message. Let's go back to Postman. I'll send another request, and in the response, we now see our customized error message for the body field. Just another example, let's customize the error message for the string rule for title as well. So in the array, I'll add a new entry, the field is title, and the rule is string, and for the error message, I'll just yell at the user. Now let's go back to Postman, send another request, and now we see our customized error message. So far, so good. Let's move on. Now sometimes we do want to have our custom validation rule other than what Laravel has already provided us. To create our own rules, there are two ways to do this. One is to use a closure in the rules array. The second option is to create a rule class. Let's go through these two options in more details. Let's use the user IDs fields as an example. So with the closure option, we simply need to define an anonymous function in the rules array. And the function takes in three arguments, attribute, value, and fail. Attribute is the field name, which in our case here will be user IDs. Value is the value that the user has applied and fail is a callback function to call when the validation has failed. So here, let's say we want to validate if each element in the user ID fields is an integer. One way of doing this is to loop through the array that the user supplied and making sure that every one of them is an integer. So I'll convert value into a collection and call the every method to loop through the array. The every method will make sure that each element in the array fulfills the condition that we supplied in the callback function, which in our case here, we'll simply check if each element is an integer. If the condition is satisfied for each element, then the result of the every method will be true, otherwise false. And here we want to fail the validation if one of the element is not an integer. So if the result of the every method is not true, then we'll call the fail callback function. The fail callback function accepts a string argument, which will be the error message that we send back in the JSON response. All right, that's our custom validation rule based on a closure. Let's try it out in Postman. So in our request body, I'll add a new field, user IDs, which is an array. And to trigger our custom rule, I'll put in a string element. Let's send a request. And in a JSON body, we see our custom error message. And now let's try an array with integer elements. And we no longer see the user ID fields giving us an error. Great, that means our rule is working. Okay, now let's see how we can refactor our rule closure into its own dedicated class. To do that, we need to create a new rule class. Let's go to our terminal and type in PHP Addison make rule, followed by the rule name. I'll call it integer array. And you'll notice that the command will create a new folder called rules in our app folder and the rule class lives in it. Let's open our newly created integer array class and it is a simple class that implements the rule interface. It has two main methods in it, passes and message. And you'll notice that they have a very similar signature compared to its closure counterpart. In the passes method, we'll put down the logic to validate the user input, for which we'll simply copy and paste from our closure. And the message method will return the string that we include in the error message. Again, we'll copy and paste from the closure. Now in this method, we don't have access to the attribute. However, Laravel allow us to use a placeholder colon attribute inside the string to refer to the attribute name. And that should do the job. All we need to do now is to go back to the request class and create a new instance of our integer array rule in the user ID's validation array. Let's try it out. We'll go back to Postman and change the elements inside the user's ID array back into string. Let's send the request again. And now we see user ID's error is back in the response. And that is it. That's how we can easily validate a request in Laravel by using the request class and validation rules. We'll learn more about validation in the next video, not only just for requests, but for generic purposes. I'll see you there. Key takeaway for this lesson, we can define request class to easily validate incoming HTTP requests. We inject request class in controller methods to get Laravel to perform validation on the incoming request. 
we can create custom validation rule either by closure or a dedicated rule class. That's it for this lesson and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.